Hello and welcome to another edition of IAB Cal Voices. I'm your host, James Law Jr. And as many of you know, I've been in the insurance industry. I was there for 11 years. Then I left for Hollywood. And then about 12 years later, I came back, sort of, where I'm doing both. And that's what this podcast is about. But this is a very full circle moment because the reason this podcast exists started with my guest that I have on today. I'm going to explain to you what that was and how they all came about. Um, but he's a very special guy. I've known him for nearly 20 years. And he writes himself as the Solution Finder. That's his title. And president and the owner of Fulton Ross here in Southern California. There's lots of community work, lots of stuff for uh, the big guy. He is just an amazing guy. My friend, Derek Ross. Hi, Derek. Hi, James. It's great to see you. Thank you for having me back. It is the full uh, loop. We did this uh, right around the beginning of COVID, and, and here we are coming out of COVID, so the timing couldn't be any better, and it's great to see you as well. Yeah, yeah. I, you know, I, that's the reason why I said I think it's time to get Derek on the show, because uh, so folks at home, if you don't, don't know this at all, um, we did an interview. I, I messaged him. And I said, I want to I want to talk to you. See what you're doing for one of my other shows on my network, JLJ Media. Uh, he gladly said yes, of course. We talked first, caught up, and then we, we follow each other online, of course. So we know kind of what's going on. But we caught up. Then we decided to sit down and talk. We had a great conversation. And some folks, Derek and the big eye, saw it. Mm. And I was like, they knew that you were around. But they were like, James Law Jr. still around? Like, I didn't go nowhere. I was with the Hollywood. Um, and they were very surprised at what I do, but not surprised at what I do, right? They're like, oh, this is natural for James, obviously. Um, and I started talking to people at Big Eye, and we got in contact and talked to them in like 10, 11, 12 years since I left. Um, and I had left on good terms. As always, always still don't break bridges, burn bridges, folks. Um, I left on good terms, and we talked, and they wanted to go into the podcasting space. They just didn't know how to do it, and they really didn't want to do it themselves, so they hired me. And here we are. So I have to thank Derek Ross. That was a great interview with me uh, a year and a half ago that this actually led me back into the fold on some level. Well, as they say, all roads do head directly back to the insurance industry. So, I, so I'm glad that, that you've uh, put your big toe in the water and you've stuck around. We've known each other for a long time, James, a long, long time. Oh, okay. and so it's just, it's a, it's a pleasure to have been able to stay in touch with you over all of these years and never lose touch. And again, I'm thankful that you've invited me to come back and, and communicate with you. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I agree. We, we've always gotten along great. Um, and you see me through all my, we're talking about hair today. You see me through all my hairstyles and stuff. So he knows, uh, he, he, he knows I've all kinds of different hairstyles over the years. Um, well, I, I want to start out with saying that I love that in one of your bios, you write in your title, in your title, you're a solution finder. I love that. Can you expand on that, please? Well, um, you know, that hits upon all aspects of my life. I, I tend to be um, a solution finder for my children who are always asking different questions and, and looking to myself and my wife to solve their problems. Um, but in general, um, I've, I've always been an individual that's interested in helping others. And so I use that solution finder moniker, not specifically to the insurance industry. It is something that I do within this industry, but, but more or less just as I travel through the world, uh, I enjoy finding solutions to problems and helping others uh, solve problems that they're unable to solve on their own. So for me, it's just being involved and, and being a part of, of, identifying and, and getting people to a place where they feel that they can be the best that they can be. You know, that's something that I always talk about, which is, you know, striving to be the best that you can be on any given day. Some days are going to be better than others, but if I can be a part of helping someone else uh, be better, then uh, it makes me feel better inside. Yeah. And I, and, that, and folks, he's telling the truth because I mean, he does a lot of community work, uh, and work within the insurance industry. Okay, so now, how long have you been in the insurance industry now? I'm probably not going to age me as you say this, but how long have you been in the industry? You know, I just started 18 months ago, so I'm, you know, fresh into this. I'm, I'm, I'm actually going to be turning 23. Okay, uh, sure. Year. Okay. But let's just say I've been in the business for uh, well over 25 years. I started when I was 15 and a half in high school, uh, found a job at the Career Center, and uh, got hired by that individual. And, and that uh, gentleman showed me the ropes. And, and uh, at that point, I was hooked. 
and worked in the insurance business all through high school and college and then graduated college and jumped right into the deep end and, and now uh, fortunate enough to, to have my own agency and, and just love what I do. I mean, we, we are very, very blessed to be a part of a fantastic uh, industry. And within that, I can, I can do some problem solving. So solution finding, yes. Correct. You do that, yes. <laughs> uh, okay, so, you know, being in this industry um, so long, what would you say to people who might be thinking about getting into industry, young folks trying to get into industry now or thinking about it? Because perpetuation obviously is a big deal in any industry, obviously. But since we're talking about insurance, you, you've been through, you've seen it all, you've seen the whole thing. So I'm just curious to you, what are some things you can, what are some solutions or things you should think about? Well, from the very beginning of getting into this industry, I was, I was taught about the need to perpetuate um, other people within the industry. It is our lifeblood. So uh, for many, many years, I've been very involved in the INVEST program and partnering with different schools um, throughout uh, where my office is and where I live and talking to young people about this wonderful industry. And this industry has so many different facets to it from sales to underwriting to claims to investigations, there's really a sweet spot where anybody can kind of fall into a wonderful career opportunity. So what I do is I go around and communicate with young people. We've brought a lot of young people over the years into our office. Uh, we groom them. We help them get licensed. We find a zone in which they can succeed and the most important thing is to find a part of the industry that, that they find fun, that they find interesting. And when you can figure out what that is, uh, normally you're able to, to get these young people to understand that the insurance industry is extremely important. Um, we are trusted advisors, no different than um, an attorney or an accountant and others in, uh, in the legal profession. So it's, it's important to you know, share the knowledge that we have instead of leaving it guarded and allow these young people to explore our industry and get involved. I mean, there's so many different ways to get involved. And I, I, it's all about showing passion for what we do. If you love what you do, it becomes infectious to others. And, and that's really what I try to do is, is talk about how much I enjoy and have enjoyed my journey in this industry for the last, you know, two plus decades. That's right. Everything you're saying is very true. I think you know, it can be infectious. Yes, when you see when you see someone totally excited. But the thing is, this industry is vast. There really is. It's very large and broad. Um, so I guess it's just finding your way, helping people find their way in there and go. Okay, plug you. You like this? There you go. You like this? There you go. I mean, that's kind of the the way to go. Because um, insurance doesn't come across very sexy. We always say it on the show it doesn't come across very sexy, very grand. But it's a great industry. I mean, I mean, I've made a living off it for a decade or so, and it's and, and it allowed me to do other things. So, can you talk about that? Because you have a family. You're 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 you had a, just had a birthday. One of the kids had a birthday recently, so that's very good. But it's, it's good for your family too, right? That you were able to raise a family while you're doing this. Yeah, I mean, exactly. Again, you need to find your space and find your zone. And for me, one of the beauties of of my day is that I really get to determine what I'm going to do in ev any given one day. And with the variety of clients that we work with that span so many different uh, professions and fields, you know, each day is something different. That my personality likes that. I'm attracted to getting different looks and navigating through um, different scenarios on, on a daily, um, on, on the daily. So where others, you know, they, they might enjoy underwriting and just sitting at a desk in front of a computer and underwriting through different, different risks. There are just so many opportunities, and you're right. I, I think that the insurance industry has been underrated uh, over the years, and it, it's been this kind of this misnomer that we are like car and you know car salesmen and and all of that and saleswomen. It's just it's just not the case, and and that's a good thing because the people that we're attracting to this business are the best of the best, and that's really important. And the more people that we can bring into this industry. Um, the more we can perpetuate it. The reality is, is that we play a vital role within, um, within the country, whether it's with personal insurance and commercial insurance and life insurance, um, insurance brokers and agents are needed. And that's, I think, one of the most important values that the state association brings 
to insurance brokers like ours because it reminds us how important it is for us to all work together, for us to all fight for the greater cause, and most importantly, meet the needs uh, of our clients who end up becoming friends, lifelong friends in, in many, many cases. It truly is a relationship business. Oh, yes. I always say the people business, relationship business, it very much is. Um, you mentioned the association, of course, IAB Cal. It was IAB West at one point. It was IABC. It's been all different names, but it's the association. Um, can you, you talked about it a little bit just a second ago, but can you expand a little bit why it is important to have this, this association for independent agents and brokers in California? Yeah, for sure. For, for, for sure, James. From the very, very beginning of my career, uh, I started and got active with the insurance association, with, with the young insurance professionals at the time. Yep. And um, through those relationships and those connections that I made with so many different people over so many years, it's really helped shape my career. Uh, it's those relationships that have been formed that have guided me in many ways. I have found many mentors over the years and friends that have been... Um, extremely helpful in my ability to succeed within the insurance industry. The association acts on so many different fronts for brokers like myself, the relationship building, the conferences, the products, the advocacy, um, the legislation, all of those pieces put together are extremely strong. And so from a very, very young age and very early in my career, I recognize the importance of being involved in our insurance association, um, supporting the insurance association and, you know, being one of its biggest fans. And, and thankfully our association here in the state of California is, is very strong. And, and that's due to all of the, the collaborative efforts of myself and you and everybody else, the leaders at the association and all the members. Um, you know, I, I look at them as, as a brother. Uh, we may be friendly competitors and that is just part of the industry, but at the same time, I have so many lifelong friends that I've been able to develop and maintain over the years that uh, even into my retirement, I know that they will be a part of my life and I will be a part of theirs. And it's just a wonderful opportunity um, for people that are new in the industry to get involved in the association. And those that have been in the business for many, many years that aren't involved in the association, wow, they have a lot to glean from uh, forging that relationship and, and moving forward with them. Yeah, there are a lot. This is one of the few industries where there is friendly competition. I mean, I, I know of industries it's not that friendly. I'm in Hollywood. <laughs> um, but in this industry, it's very much, it's a, yes, you are competitors on some level, but people are really very open to sharing what they can with you, within reason, obviously, with you to help you out. Or, you know, I mean, I, I've seen that over the years so many times. It wasn't, it wasn't just, it's not so tight. Everybody's not just so tight. Um, and people are willing to say, yeah, I do. I do know this a little, this area a little better than maybe you do. I can assist you a little bit. I mean, it's, it's, been, it's been wonderful. I've seen it actually in place. Uh, it's been a great thing. Agreed. Um, okay. I didn't, I didn't ask you this question last time. This actually just, this actually just came to me now okay. as you were talking. What is one personal trait that you think has gotten better since being in the insurance industry of yours? Oh, wow. I, mean, um, I, I didn't ask you that last time. I'm thinking, I don't know, I think about that. Yes. I mean, that, for me, that's an easy one. Um, and this, this also goes into all the community work that I've done uh, over the many, many years is uh, my ability to uh, communicate and speak in front of and with other people. So when I came into the business, um, I, I think that I was, was, was a bit shy. Uh, although I don't come across shy, I wasn't comfortable in, in speaking in front of people and with people. Um, and so over the years, the association, due to my involvement on the local level, forced me to grab a microphone, get in front of 100 plus people and communicate. And so in the very beginning, I can remember, you know, being hot under the collar and sweating and very nervous about that. And, and as I did it more, I became more comfortable with the process. And then obviously, as I've gotten older and have done it many, many times, it has helped me uh, feel more confident in myself and my abilities to communicate a message. I think the, the key to that is being prepared. Uh, and a lot of that um, uh, was taught to me by, again, many of these mentors that I, that I have been surrounded by 
uh, within my career through this industry that if I didn't have them, then, then my abilities to communicate um, probably wouldn't be as strong as they are today. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I think I think we talked about it a little bit last time, but I, I had to ask you that actually, a particular question. That's a good one. Yeah, it's it's in this industry, you learn about yourself. You do you learn and you, and you strengthen certain qualities that maybe would have been strengthened if you hadn't joined this industry. I mean, at all. Absolutely. I heard you said their sales abilities got better, or this got better, the writing got better. Like there's a there's always something that that gets you a little going. And for me, I just I just learned a whole, I learned a new industry. I get to learn something new that I still could take with me. And other things that insurance doesn't go away, right? Insurance is insurance is constant. Insurance is recession proof. Insurance is just it's always there, isn't it? Well, absolutely. And 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 life is is constant and ever changing. Yeah. <laughs> so the whole goal for me in life is to continue to refine. Uh, I don't feel like you hit a point in life where it's you know this is who I am, this is who I'm always going to be, and this is it. Um, I, I'm I'm open to that constant refinement. So I'm always finding different areas of myself that. I'm willing to look in the mirror and work on, get better at, and again, strive to be the best that I can on, on any given day. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so what are some of the, the community things you're working on these days? Because uh, we talked a year and a half ago, some stuff you're working on. What are some of the couple of things you're working on right now? Well, um, I am uh, still involved with our school district, the Oak Park yeah. Unified School District. I'm a, an elected official on the governing board, uh, serving out um, the final two years of my my second term and, and definitely plan on uh, going for a third term. So, you know, managing through COVID and, and a lot of the social issues over the last uh, couple of years have been challenging, but very eye opening. So we're getting ready to open up school next week uh, in yes. a full capacity uh, on site learning, okay. doing it in, in the safest way that we can. And a lot of my risk management background within the insurance industry has been very helpful navigating through the process of, of getting our kids uh, back into school. So I take a lot of work, uh, a lot of pride in, in that work. I'm still involved uh, with our park district, also elected my 10th year on our park district. This is my third year is serving as the chairman uh, of the park district in our community. And then just dabbling in uh, whatever other things my daughters are doing with Girl Scouts, uh, National League Charity, Charity of Hope, and then at the same time, trying to find some time to be a good, loving husband and a father to my to my daughters, who are absolutely awesome. Whom um, I think they believe that I'm teaching them a lot through their lives, but but I'm learning more from them um, than I ever thought. And, and they're only 11 and 12, so I'm I'm beyond blessed, James. Beyond blessed. I know you. Are. I know. I know you. Are. I know your wife and everything. So I know you are. Um, and folks, you know, he also does a lot of things to diversity. He does a lot of stuff with diversity issues. And that's, yeah, that's, that's my friend there. I love it. And you do, you work on all kinds we, of stuff. We, we've been spending a lot of time talking about not just diversity, but equity. Uh, and equity is, is really, really important these days. So within the school district, you know, identifying if, you know, the way we teach our curriculum, the facilities are equitable. And so that doesn't just deal with um, color. It deals with gender. It deals with religion. It deals with everything. And that, that's been a, a, a challenging project to dive yeah. into. And, and I can tell you it's been hard. Um, there have been a lot of difficult conversations that we have had with parents and students and teachers um, and consultants. But, you know, for me, it's taking things head on. Again, looking in the mirror and, and just being open, wide-eyed and open to other people's thoughts and ideas. And at the end of the day, coming to a point where um, we deal with it in, in what we call a climate of care and in a thoughtful way. And, and if you can go through things in a thoughtful way with the fundamental ideas of kindness and compassion, then, you know, that's what it's all about. And, and we try to bring the same things into our office with our team here in the office is, is just having a climate of care, being thoughtful in, in our approach, um, and really understanding that we all come from different places and that we all need to be supported and cared for and that we're all equal. And, and that, that, is, that for me is, is what uh, life is all about. And, I, and that's why that's one of the reasons why I love you. I, I'm, I'm a big fan of, there's a lot of, we have a lot of sameness and we need to get to that. There's a lot of sameness between all of us. And if, and if you and I can be friends and become different backgrounds, then anything, you know, anything's possible. You know what I mean? Like anything's possible in business, in community, in education. It's all possible. We're in a, we're in a great country. It's all, it's all possible. 
But it's not even just about this country. I've had the opportunity over the last few years to explore the world. I have a lot of clients overseas and spending a lot of time in Southeast Asia has really opened up my eyes to different cultures and how um, we are so different in, in some of our cultural values and how we go about life, but we are all the same inside. You know, we all bleed the same color red and being open to that and really understanding that as humans, when we can find the good in things that we do and we could use that as the commonality for uh, trying to make the world a better place, it's, it's a recipe for success. And so I just, again, feel really blessed, A, to be alive, and I'm extremely grateful to travel this planet. And again, to, you know, know you and, and just all the other people that I've had the opportunity to um, communicate with and learn about over the years has just been uh, a, a wonderful, wonderful life experience. Yeah. Well, you're amazing and great continued success for you uh, and for your company, for your family, for your community. Um, I, I think you're a great example folks can look to, um, which we need more examples out there. So thank you. And thank you for your time, of course. You are uh, always very kind with your words and the feelings are mutual. And I just wish you the utmost um, success. I've watched you over the last many, many years succeed in so many different ways. I know you got your hands in a, a million different pots. I know that you are, um, you grow flowers and vegetables and all the things that you do in your house. And I know that community and leadership is important to you. So I'm really happy that we started this a year and a half ago and here we are meeting again today. So again, I'm just very grateful for your time and, and your energy is so powerful and positive. And that's, that's again, that's what it's all about. Well, thank you. Thank you much. Uh, Derek Ross, folks, uh, Kuch and Ross, where can they actually find you guys if they want to find you guys for business or anything, or anything else? Well, you can find us on the World Wide Web at www.kulchinross.com. That's K-U-L-C-H-I-N-R-O-S-S dot com. Perfect. And IABCal.org is the organization uh, website there. Also, a lot of these are on there, folks. They're also on my channel, which is JLJ Media, which is an online network. Um, they're also on all audio streaming platforms. So anybody who's listening, hello, listeners. Uh, we are here. We're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple, Google, everywhere. You can just get a, get a podcast, take a listen, take us with you when you're at the gym, walking the kids, walking the dog, sitting on the beach, on the plane, take us with you. And Derek is one example of what many people I've been talking to for the last year or so who are wonderful and who are in this business and are here to help you if they can. Um, that's And that's what's really important. I'm James Lott Jr. You can follow me. We're all James Lott Jr. are sold at James Lott Jr. on all social media platforms. And we'll see everybody next time. Take care and get right.